You know, this week and this month, we're dealing with generational curses and bondages. And um, I think you can get this book here. I recommend this book to everybody that's here. They shall cast out demons, uh, study in demonology with, by Dr. Fred Roberts. And um, it's a powerful book that will help you and give you a greater depth um, in knowing how the devil attacks. Because the devil is not a fair fighter. The devil has never been fair, never ever will be fair. He will attack your children, he'll attack you, he'll attack your business. And that's what he wants to do because he has come, the, Jesus said the thief has come to steal, kill and destroy. He hasn't come for any niceties at all. He has come to steal, kill and destroy. Your life, your lives of your children, your business, anything that you're involved with, your life completely, he wants to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life, abundant life. That's Zoe life. That's a supernatural life. Amen. And uh, so I want to share with you about deliverance from bondages. Jesus went about doing good. God was with, uh, 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 let me just, in your Bibles, go to Acts 10.38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. And so it's a devil of oppression. There is oppression the devil brings oppression it's God that heals the devil brings oppression we've got to make the distinction all Jesus was healing those who were oppressed by the devil oppression means disease sickness weakness all of those things Jesus delivered all of uh, all of them people from all of those um dominion uh, uh, the oppressions of the devil in Luke 13 10 now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on Sabbath and behold, there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for 18 years. And she was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. But when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. And he laid hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. See, the devil once had bent this woman over for 18 years. A lot of times, you can go to a doctor, and the doctor cannot find out what's wrong with you. So you can say, well, this, my, my dad used to deal all the time with deafness. There are deaf and dumb spirits. Jesus prayed for those with a spirit that was deaf and dumb. It made people deaf and dumb. And when he cast them out, the people could hear and they could speak. And so it's a demonic force that does it. We've we, we got to realize that there is a spirit realm and that we are in a war in that spirit realm. And we can't allow the devil to overpower us or destroy us in any way. There's so many areas that he comes and attacks us because he doesn't want you to be a successful Christian. He doesn't want you to live a successful life or a happy life. He wants your life to be miserable. He's miserable, so he wants you to be miserable. And he wants your life to be miserable. He doesn't want you to enjoy life. And so understand that there we, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. And so there's different areas. There's the devil who's, who's, who's the main uh, um, authority, and then you get principalities and powers which are fallen angels, or angels that fell with Jesus, uh, not fell, fell with Satan, Lucifer. And then you get those others that are underneath them. And the devil can't be at more than one at, at, more than one place at a time. He can't, he's not like the Holy Spirit or God who can be everywhere at once. And that's why he sends out his demons to plague our lives, to, to press our lives. And he uses them to be at, because they can only be at one place at one time. And he sends them to influence decision making in countries. He sends them to, 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 um, to bring sickness, to bring all different diseases. If you look in Haiti, they declared Haiti to be, the, the religion of Haiti to be voodoo. And so the moment they did that, it's the poorest country, it's the, it's the most depressed country that you've ever seen. And people pour money in there, but it just doesn't come right. Because it's under the control of demons. You can go to different places, in different places there are spirits that control areas. There are fallen angels, or they, we call them uh, strong men, who are over an area. Like in New York, you can go to parts of New York and you find it's very aggressive. It's like an aggressive spirit that is there. In Cape Town there's this different type of spirit than is in Durban. You can go to some places in the south where they, where they, they call the Bible Belt. 
there's a lot of churches, there's a lot of religious spirits, and in the same place, there's a lot of pornography. At the same place, in those towns where they call the Bible Belt, there are churches and porno places, they overwhelm each other. And there's great splits. In all those churches in the church belt, you'll see there's a church on the hill. We drove around. There's a church here and a church here. And this pastor, one pastor was singing. Um, they had this favorite song that they like to sing called Somewhere in the Shadow You'll Find Jesus. And so this pastor said, Look, I don't want you to sing that said to the youth, uh, to the the youth pastor, I don't want you to sing that song because Jesus, he is the light of the world and he doesn't have a shadow. So he, it's somewhere in the shadow you'll find Jesus. And everybody used to cry. And so what he did was he split the church and he went and he built another church where they sat, they began to they sat every Sunday and cried and said somewhere in the shadows you'll find Jesus. And they split the church. And it, that's what happens. The devil comes and he brings strife to the church. He'll come and bring all these different things uh, to, to, to try and tear the church of Jesus Christ apart. And he sends out demonic forces to do that. The devil tried to influence Jesus. The devil, when Jesus was hungry, the Spirit of God had led him into the wilderness, and he was hungry after 40 days. And the devil came to him and said, if you are the Son of God, or since you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread and satisfy that hunger. And Jesus said, man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, we live on the word of God. And Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. What the devil does is bring deception. With Peter, he, Peter came and Jesus told him he's going to the cross. And Peter said to him, be it far from you, Lord, you won't go to the cross. And Jesus said to him, Satan, get behind me. He wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking to the influence behind him. Because the devil didn't want Jesus to go to the devil didn't want Jesus to go to the cross because he knew that he would be he was in danger of losing everything. And so the devil, we are fighters not against flesh, it's not against people, it's against the demonic forces. And we need to recognize demonic forces as what they are. My mom in this book shares a story about her life. And it's a powerful story how being a pastor's wife, her and my dad were married and they weren't happy in their marriage because my mother suffered from rejection, terrible rejection. She would remember any wrong that had been done to her. She was like an elephant. She always remembered what somebody had done. And so she carried a lot of unforgiveness. When she was small, she ran to my grandfather to pick, him up, pick her up. And he just pushed her out the way. And so a spirit of rejection came into her life and began to control her life. And so when she married my dad, she didn't understand love and she couldn't give love because she had never received love. She didn't have the ability to receive love. So for many years of their marriage, they were unhappy in their marriage. And I, I, she, she told my father, I'm leaving. He said, no, you're not leaving. I remember a little boy, he would lock her in the room and she'd kick on the door and say, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. He said, you're never leaving. You're leaving over my dead body. And so she said, open the door and I'll leave you. <laughs> I'll make sure your body's dead. <laughs> and he wouldn't let her go. And then one day we were in America. My dad was preaching in, in, um, in, in Dallas. And uh, my mom found a, a CD with... Kenneth E. Hagen, senior, Kenneth Hagen, senior, and uh, taught about faith, and she realized, and she began to pray, and the Lord showed her where this rejection had come into her life, and how this rejection had come, and with rejection had come depression. Understand when uh, it, there's, uh, demons come in, in bunches, they come in gangs, they don't like to be alone, and they want to satisfy their desires using your body. They want to use your body. Understand, a Christian can't be possessed because possession means total possession, spirit, soul, body, intellect, everything. But a spirit, if you're a born-again Christian, your spirit man is saved. It's born again, and so the devil cannot get in there. He can influence you, but he can't get into your spirit. So the only areas he can influence is your soul area, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect. And that area, he tries to influence. Also your body. He tries to get you because he's a legalist. The devil knows if he has a legal right to you. So the way you speak is very important. If we don't speak in line with God's word, if you say, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, the devil will oblige you and make you sick. If you keep saying, talking about sickness and talking about all of those things, you open the door for the devil to come in and you've got to shut that door. And there's, if you're backsliding, is another great thing. My dad Spoke to uh, backsliding opens a door for the devil to come in. 
There was a man who, who was in, uh, a, a warlock, and my, he got saved, and my dad met him and went to go and look at all the paintings he used to paint when he was in this Satanist church. And all the pictures had these demons that I'd seen with blue eyes, big blue eyes, and these beautiful paintings of these uh, demons or these fallen angels. And uh, he said that they used to go and pray against the church. They used to go and send demons out and pray against the church, pray against the pastor, pray against the congregation, send demons of strife into the church, send demons against the pastor, demons of lust. They actually used to send women into the audience to come and, and, and entice the pastor and that he would, with lust, so he would leave his wife and destroy many churches like that. In England, it's England is a, is, a, is a hotbed for witchcraft. And witchcraft is not just intimidation and intimidation or manipulation to gain control. It is also sorcery. Sorcery is a part that many people have taken part in, where you go and read the tea, tea leaves, or you go and get your palm read, or you go and get the cards counted, or all of those things. Any way you go and try to get information about your future in any other way, that's sorcery. If you go in any other way outside of the Word of God and trying to get information for your children or for yourself, that's called sorcery in the Bible. And, the, and so the Bible says when you go and do that, you open a door for the devil to come in. So many times people go to these, which, these uh, people that tell you your fortune and everything else, what's going to happen in the future, or you read your fortune in the, in the magazine, and people think, oh, that's, that's fine. Is there nothing going to happen? There was a, a lady who... Um, she, she worked for this, this, um, this man, and he, he was, belonged to this, this cult, and she was a Christian, and he gave her this, uh, uh, this, this uh, paper that, to type out this message to all these members of the thing. And so she said, no, I don't want to do it, because, um, you know, I don't feel it's right, I'm a Christian, and I don't want to write out this stuff. And so he said, no, that's okay. But he went and told the leader of this cult about it. And they, sent the, they prayed and sent these demons. And her whole hand crunched into rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. And so she heard Derek Prince speaking on demonology and casting out devils. And so she said, no, this is, this, I don't have any rheumatoid arthritis. I've never had it in my life before. It's an attack of the devil. And her hands were swollen up. And she cast the devil out. And, this, and she was healed immediately. And so... Demons can be sent, and we've got to be careful we don't open the door. One of the doorways, the doorways is unforgiveness, and this is what my mother was talking about. She had terrible unforgiveness in her heart towards my grandfather, towards my grandmother, towards people that had hurt her, and she suffered not only with unforgiveness, but rejection. And the devil's like a leech. He'll attach himself to you and suck the life out of you if you allow him to. And so Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed, oppressed, Oppression means that you don't have control. Oppression means that there's something driving you. You don't have control. Like smoking. I used to have a, I, I couldn't give up smoking. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't give it up until I, I, uh, in the name of Jesus, I prayed and I cast the spirit of nicotine out of myself and alcohol and drugs. Any type of addiction. See, the devil always pushes. God always leads. That's how you know whether it's demonic or not. When there's, when there's un, you can't control it. One of the things as well is gossip. Gossip in the church. Gluttony is a big one. The church, that people, the church people don't even worry about. Somebody can be 600 pounds and they don't even worry about it. But the Bible says there's no self-control. It's gluttony. It's the same as wine. Do not be drunk with wine. In other words, have control. You have to have self-control. And sometimes the devil can get into your life and say you eat because you're sad, you, you're depressed, you're something or other, that the devil has control there. And all of a sudden, there's all these things happening in your life. And my mother was dealing with this thing of rejection. She was with my father and she used to sleep all the time. In their marriage, she used to sleep all the time. She used to, every time my father would, uh, she, wouldn't, she couldn't tell him she loved him. She, all of those things. And um, she, she just didn't want to stay in the marriage. She didn't understand what she should do or how she should should behave until she read this book and she realized that it was a demonic thing and so she realized that this this the lord showed her she said lord show me where this, this spirit came in she said that day when your father pushed you away because my mother had another little uh, another little girl was born into my 
uh, my grandfather's family and she fell into fire and she got burned and so she died and my grandfather I feel didn't wasn't after her he wasn't able to love anybody and so that rejection he didn't want to show affection in case something happened but that rejection touched my mom and my mom felt rejection she couldn't exp she never experienced love so she couldn't give love and then when the Lord showed her where it had come and this rejection had come and because the devil will attack you emotionally that's your soul area. He can't touch your spirit, but he can touch your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. And in your emotional side, that's where depression comes. That's where fear comes. That's where anger comes. Another thing is anger. Uncontrollable anger. Somebody cuts you off and so but a boom ba goom. You got a whole new language. And the stupid thing is that, you know, you're shouting at that person, or really you're shouting at yourself. Because your windows are all closed. They can't hear what you're saying. So you're literally just blowing, your, you're shouting at yourself. But this uncontrollable anger, I've seen people just go totally out of control. They will get so angry that they literally shake. Pastors, I've seen pastors that have uncontrollable anger. They have to be led out of the room. They couldn't even come to meetings because they were so full of anger. And uh, I saw a pastor who was controlled by coffee. He had a, he, he just addiction. And we were, we were at a game farm, my dad, myself, and this pastor, and, and some other people, and his wife. And we were all in the Rondavals, and the, the cafeteria only opened up at 8 o'clock. And we, we went to the, his Rondaval to look for him, because we were going to go on the game drive. And we said, where is he? She said, no, he's, at the, he's looking for coffee. So she said to me, don't get between him and his coffee, he's like a bear. So I thought, what is she talking about? There he's, we get there and he's banging on the door. I'm putting my jersey on because it's cold early in the morning. And there he's banging on the door. They open the door, he runs in. He's coffee, coffee, coffee. And black, no sugar, boom, down the first one. I don't know how he didn't burn himself to death. Next one, boom, coffee. Next one, boom, coffee. And then, ooh, he went like that, ooh. That demon was satisfied. Because it was an addiction. He had this addiction. He had to have coffee in the morning. And eventually they had to cut his stomach away and eventually he passed away. But there is, the devil's out to destroy you in every way he can. There's a lot of times he'll try and destroy your concentration. He won't allow you to focus. A distraction will come. There's a spirit of distraction that comes. When you're reading your Bible, all of a sudden your mind just goes off. And all of a sudden you're thinking about space. John 3 verse 16 for God so loved the... Oh, yeah. I wonder what's happening there in space now. <laughs> I know they've got a new telescope up there. I wonder. Distraction. It touch you emotionally. Because a lot, of a lot of times we carry hurts from, from our past. We carry hurts in our family. Many of us don't feel love. We suffer with rejection. With rejection comes unforgiveness. And unless we forgive, we can never be healed. Because it's a spirit of rejection. It's a spirit of unforgiveness that comes and dwells in your life. And I had a spirit of My mother used to sleep. And it passed on in our family. When my grandmother died, all I did was go and lie in my room and sleep. Because I was very close to my grandmother. And I thought the more I slept, the more I wouldn't feel the pain of her going. I wouldn't grieve as much. And my mother had exactly the same thing. I didn't even know about it. It was passed down through my mother's family that was passed down her, her great 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 grandfather they found out looking through the history books he used to bring alcohol to the king and so that spirit of alcohol was passed down through the family so my grandfather was a drunk my uncle was a drunk my, my father's uncle's uh, my grandfather's father, brother was a drunk it just went down through the family I was a drunk and it passed down you have to break it a generational thing because there are spirits that stay with the family like you'll see that your your father might your grandfather might have been poor and it passed down you say, oh it's in the family great 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 grandfather he was poor great 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 son so was poor and oh this this sickness is in our family we have cancer in our family you go and see a doctor doctor says oh you have a lump yo yo it's in our family we have we have cancer and so Jesus cast out devils of disease. When he cast out devils, the disease left. There's spirits of cancer. In my father's side of the family, there was, spirits, there was cancer. My father had uh, um, many melanomas in his back that were cut out. 
And then so when I went, they, they, I found, they, had, I found a, they had a cancer in my brain. And uh, so I, in, the, in the name of Jesus, I stood against it. And the Lord healed me from viral meningitis and t- t- tumor in the brain. Also tumors on my arm and my face, c- uh, skin cancer. I had skin cancer. You've seen the pictures of me. I had skin cancer all over my face. And uh, the Lord healed me. The thing just fell off. And so it's, it was a, it's a demonic thing. And so with my mom, once she, got, she forgave and she went to the toilet and she said, Devil, I command you to leave my body now. You spirit of rejection, go. You spirit of unforgiveness, go. And as she did that, she said she felt this lightness come to her. She has a pastor's wife filled with the Holy Ghost, Pentecostal pastor's wife. And you, it's not can a Christian have a spirit, a devil, but can a devil have a Christian? And so she, when she was delivered from that, when my dad got back, she was a totally different woman. She said my dad was so surprised because, yes, she was loving and kind and gentle and cooked, which she never did before. And you can read that whole story in this book. I think we've got it here in the, in the library, in the, in the bookshop. But this Jesus said, we've got to deal with it. If there's anything in your life that you don't have control of, anything that's, that constantly pushes you, anything that pushes you into doing something, it might be anger, it might be pornography, it might be perversion, it might be so many different things. I'll, I'll name some of the things that um, but Jesus gave us control over. Because also, first, first of all, remember, there's, we, the, the, there is the spirit world. We are dealing with the spirit world. And the spirit world influ- influences this world. And these demons will influence governments. They'll influence uh, ministers to make the wrong decisions in life, uh, uh, governments to make the wrong decision, preachers to make the wrong decision about anything, people to make wrong decisions. That's why when, when the Lord gives you, you say, I, I received a word from the Lord, then you need two or three witnesses. In other words, there has to be confirmation, two or three confirmations to that. And the way you know it's from God or not, the Bible says the peace of God is the umpire of your soul. So when you're going to make a decision, there'll be peace here. You'll feel peace. There won't be, if you're going out with somebody and, you, and, and you're talking about marriage and you don't feel peace yet, don't marry them. The Bible says you marry the wrong wife, it's like dripping water on your head all day, all night. And it'll drive you crazy. So if you don't have that peace, don't get married. Is a lot of people get married too quickly, they make, the, make a decision quickly. The six weeks, boom, they're married. They didn't even know that person. You need to be friends first. Then you need to, the romantic thing needs to come, you must be friends first because there's more friendship. If you don't have not friends in marriage, your marriage is not going to work because it's not that hot romance all the time. So it's, there's, you've got to be friends. And so sometimes people make the wrong decision and they marry somebody. Or they, they, you know, there's somebody died, uh, it's somebody died in their life and they need somebody in their life. And so I know this man in, in Durban that he's, he had, him and his wife had a, she had um, liver cancer. And he got a nurse to look after her and the last six months of her life were terrible. But she died and six weeks later he was married to the nurse. I know a pastor in, in, in New Orleans. His wife died. They barely buried her, and he married the, 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 the Mexican. She was a Mexican nurse. And he said, the wonderful thing about her, she can't talk English. <laughs> so she shouts and moans at him. He just... And you can make the wrong decision because the, the devil wants to destroy you. He wants your life to be a mess. He doesn't want you to have peace. Jesus said you can have perfect peace. My perfect peace, my peace I give to you. You know, we can say it all we like, but if we don't experience in that peace. And the Bible says in, in Romans, I think it's Romans 5 or Romans 15, it says, perfect peace, peace and joy come in believing. Peace and joy come in believing. And what Jesus has done and believing what he said. And you've got to, when you stand against the devil, you've got to have a sword. Jesus said to the devil when he tempted him, he said, 
A man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the word of God is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing between soul and spirit, bone and marrow. When you deal with the devil, you deal with the devil with the word. You have to have the word. If you're unsaved, you missed. <laughs> you, you, you got no power. Because the Bible says there's two families. If you're born again, you come into the family of God, you're safe. If you're not born again, you're in the family of the devil. So when you die, you go home. So if your father's the devil, you just go home to dad. <laughs> if God's your father, then you go home to him. But it's this, this demonic thing about my mom, for, for my mom to have it, I had it in my life. I had to get rid of these de demonic forces in my life of uh, pornography and anger and uh, murder. And, I mean, all these different things are in my life. And so... Anything you can't shake yourself loose from is bondage. You, people try to get free on their own, but they can't. Addiction to anything while, uh, um, will destroy you and your family. Any addiction, if you have an addiction, it will destroy eventually destroy your family. Because that addiction, even though it might be hidden, it'll, it, because it's a spirit, it will transfer to your family, to your children. And that's why we need to deal with it. Get that spirit out of the way and the person is free. Cast out that spirit of bondage. No matter what it is. Kleptomania. Some people just go and steal. They go and steal. They got money, but they still steal. They got money and they, 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 the security guard stops them. He said, oh, you've got that in your purse. They said, no, I don't. Yes, you do. They, they take the thing that's a small article and they, they, their purse is full of, or, and their wallet is full of money. They could have paid for it. But they have this urge to steal. Like they'll come to your house and you might be 10 rand on the table. They might, have 100, they might have 100 rand in their pocket, but they'll take their 10. It's a spirit. Compulsive lying. Oh, I could lie. I see some, some pastors have got lying spirits. Especially evangelists. Because they say evangelically speaking. They'll say like five people got saved. They say, oh, 50 got saved. No, you're lying. But I could lie. My sister Linda could lie. My sister Linda could just lie like that. And when you've got a spirit of lying, lying just comes out and you wonder why you're lying. You just lie. And then you, you, try, and, you try and make a story bigger so that everybody look at you and say, oh, you're wonderful or something. Or, or I, I don't know why. You just feel like you want to lie. And I had that. I had to get rid of that. Compulsive lying. Don't give place to the devil. The devil uses demons in churches to bring discord, dissension, conflict, and disharmony. The devil, the devil brings it in. All of a sudden, you're upset with the person sitting next to you. Upset with the choir. The choir is upset with this one. The one in the choir is upset with that one. Who do you think is influencing them? It's the devil. And you've got to resist the devil and you flee from you. When that thing comes, you rebuke it in Jesus' name. So no, this is my brother, this is my sister. I'm not listening to nonsense. I'll not allow strife in the church. I'll not allow strife to come out of my mouth. I will not allow my ear to be a gossiping ear or my tongue to be a gossiping tongue. I will not listen to gossip. I will not allow my ear to be a rubbish bin for people's talk. Because there's always somebody who wants to talk something. Point to the one that's been gossiping to you. <laughs> Gossip is a terrible thing. It destroys compulsive gossip. The devil uses these things for discord, lying to cause dissension, conflict, and disharmony. In Matthew 12, 43 and 45, the unclean spirit goes out of a man. It's resident, it's home. Demons can have reason and can make decisions and exercise their will. The Bible says in that place, the devil makes decision. He said, I will go. He has will. And so these demons have this, and so they try to inflict their will on you. In your soul area, that's why in your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, you need to renew constantly to know the will of God. In your mind, your will, and your emotions. It has to be constantly coming in line with God's word. Because the way you get, um, trans how you get renewed is by renewing your mind. 
You've got to renew your mind constantly. You can't listen to the rubbish that the devil speaks. And so the devil says, says I want a home. Now, I'll, I'll share with you some various kinds of evil spirits that I've dealt with, my father's dealt with, and the, various kinds of spirits. Spirits of jealousy, just jealous. Wives are jealous of their husband. Why are you looking at that woman? I'm not looking at anyone. My father, demons used to come and attack my father. One day, my father was sitting at the, at the stoplight. I was with him. And he was uh, sitting like this driver. And he's going, and he's praying. And the radio's on, and I'm looking out the window. And this guy walks across the front of the car. He's got a woman holding this woman's hand. And he looks at my father like that. Big guy. Looks at my father. And my dad's just going, And he comes over to the window and bangs on the window. Boom, boom, boom. So I turn, I'm about 17, I'll, I'm going to take this guy now. Yeah, so my dad opens the window, he says, hello, can I help you? He says, stop looking at my wife, stop looking at my woman. So my dad says, I'm not looking at her. He says, why not? Is she ugly? <laughs> that demon was just so mad, that spirit of jealousy. There's a spirit of ill will. You, you, you just, you just, it's just ill will. You just, you just wish ill will on everyone. Well, if I'm going through this thing, everybody else should go through it as well. If I'm having a rough time, you should have a rough time too. Why should I bother with you? Then there's lying spirits, deceiving spirits, the Bible says. There's deceiving spirits. That spirit that came to Peter was a deceiving spirit. It didn't want Peter. Peter said to Jesus, don't go to the cross. That demon, that spirit was trying to deceive Peter. That, and, and Peter thought he was saving Jesus. But Jesus had to go to the cross. And Jesus said, I rebuke you, Satan. Get behind me. They're spirits of distress. People are always in distress. You call them, they're always under distress. Oh, oh, you just don't know. This world. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They're distressed. They're spirits that are perverse. People are just perverse. I, I, I was watching last night, I was watching the, the, this guy who's a comedian, and he started off, so his jokes are funny, and all of a sudden he just got perverse. I mean, totally perverse. And it's a spirit of perverse, and all the other, and what's happened is all those other perverse spirits watching him all laugh. And I don't want anything controlling me. That's why I decided to get rid of spirits in my life, because I want no one controlling me. I'm in control, and you are in control. Not going to allow anything to control you. There's, there's, a spirit, there's spirits that distract. You're reading your Bible. All of a sudden, you're thinking about the moon. You're thinking about something else. Spirits of despair. Oh, everything's going wrong. They, people phone you up. Oh, pastor. Oh. And you hear in their voice that despair. Oh. Another side, you go, oh, no. Do I have to listen to this again? <laughs> Despair. There's a spirit of harlotry and prostitution. There was a woman that came to our church, and, 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 and her, her husband was my um, staff sergeant in the army. And she would just go out, and just once a month, she would go and find a, a young soldier and just sleep with him. The spirit came on her. And they said, no, she had, she had to head in a car accident, and so this has happened. And so my dad said, no. And they try, everybody tried to keep it quiet, but she was caught with her clothes off, and she was in this place and that place, and they, 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 they were supposed to be, and other than that, were happily married. And my dad cast the spirit out of her, the spirit of harlotry, har har prostitution. And it left her, and she was normal after that. The spirits of procrastination, I'll do it tomorrow. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Well, the Lord tells you, I want you to go to the Word ah, tomorrow, Lord. You know, you need to go and look for a job ah, next week. Lord convicts us men. You need to tell your wife you love her ah, tomorrow. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> unclean spirits. Have you seen unclean spirits? They're in the streets. All those street people have got unclean spirits in them. They don't want to bath. Unclean. If they see soap, they nearly die. 
You throw soap with them, it's like holy water. Yay! <laughs> and they're unclean. That spirit that Jesus, that was in the tombs, was unclean. It was in the dirt and the, and, the, and, and the dead bodies and everything. Unclean spirit. You know, some people don't want to bath. I don't know if you know some of them. You know, he's sitting there. They got water, they got everything. In, in England, my father got brought up, they used to bath once a week. The English, once a week. When my mother married my father, she said, when do you bath? He said, once a week. She said, you better get rid of that English spirit. Because she made us bath. We bathed morning and night. She made sure we were clean. All of us kids, we wake up in the morning before school, bath. Come home at night, bath. So it could be just the English spirit, I don't know. <laughs> there are dumb spirits and deaf spirits. They cause deafness and dumbness. One of my dad's uh, uh, things that he was very successful in was casting out deaf spirits. Deaf spirits and dumb spirits are usually linked. Sometimes men bluff they have dumb spirits and deaf spirits. They can't hear. It's when their wives talk. What's that? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Then there's spirits of weakness. I, you know, your body just goes weak. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. It's an attack of the devil. There's like a weakness that comes, and all of a sudden you think, hang on, I must have a brain tumor. I must have something like that. There's something that's, that's going on. I've got this weakness. There's a weakness in my back. There's a weakness in my arms. There's a weakness in my legs. There's spirits of sickness. There's spirits of divination. That woman that followed uh, uh, um, Paul, and she was saying, these are the men, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the men of the most high God. And she was telling the truth. But what happened? What did Paul say? He was irritated. She was t telling the truth, but it was a spirit of divination. He cast that spirit out of that servant girl, and she couldn't tell the fortunes anymore. And the whole town rioted. You know, just Paul, wherever he went, there was riots. Why? The demons got upset. We need some riots. Demons should be rioting around us. Get upset. I don't forget when I, I met this, this guy who was a, a, a warlock, and he knew me from the world. I went and I stood there, and after the whole thing, I went to, you all know the story about, he showed me his, the, the place where he served the devil and had a... a altar and, 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 and uh, Satan's Bible written in blood. But at the end of it all, he sat me down in front of him and I saw the power of God. He was a massive guy and his voice was, I'm like this. Hey, I take you out. Hey. And I, and I said to him, in the name of Jesus, you need Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus. And straight away his voice says, no, 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 no. Demons cannot stand the victory that was won at the cross. The demons are, know they're defeated, but they know if you don't know, they know that you don't know. And that's why my mother said she didn't know. And that's why she allowed that thing in her life, but she had to learn that the this, this spirit can come and the spirit of, of rejection, the spirit of depression. There's a spirit of deceit, a spirit of fear, a spirit of error, a spirit of falsehood. Sometimes there's, you, you can believe something and it's not even true. And that's what deception is. Deception is a lie that is believed to be truth. And only way you can be delivered from that is there's a devil that will blind your mind. And you'll say, no, I'm right. There's some people, you can show them the proof and they're still right. If they deceive. They think they're right. In their heads, they think they're right. But it's a spirit of deception. There's a spirit of falsehood. There's a spirit, we've dealt with a spirit of arthritis. There was a lady who was, uh, um, she, she, she worked for this uh, guy who was an Indian man who uh, was in this cult. And he was writing, he asked her to do this memo, uh, memo about uh, this, all the, the these curses and things. And so she said she, she didn't feel right about doing it. So he said, okay, if you're a Christian, don't do it. But he went back and he told the leader of this cult about this woman wouldn't do it. And so she sent a spirit. She, it, they prayed and they sent a spirit after her. And her hands swelled up and, her, and, and claw, went like claws. And she realized it was an attack of the devil because she listened to um, 
Derek Prince's uh, tape, and she realized it was an attack from the devil. So she said, I belong to the Lord. These, are, these hands belong to the Lord. I've given myself to him. I've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You have no authority here. I belong to Jesus. I've been covered by the blood, washed by the blood of Jesus. I stand in the blood of Jesus, and I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And this thing left her, and her hands became normal again. So arthritis can be a spirit. Asthma. I've seen people deal from asthma. There was a man that stayed with us, Ernest. He couldn't breathe. He always had to have the pump. And everywhere he went, he went to the parabats and everything else and had a pump. My dad prayed for him and this demon came out of him. And when this demon came out, he tried to choke himself. It was the funniest thing you've ever seen. My dad cast the devil out of him and he was, held his, he was grabbing his own throat. And he squeezed so hard, he, he, he pushed his carotid artery so he'd pass out. So every time he let go, he'd, he'd come back up again. And he squeezed himself and tried to kill himself. There's a spirit of murder in him. And my dad cast it out. And uh, it all started from asthma, the spirit of cancer. When you, when you, when you deal with the, the, the spirit of cancer, there's a spirit of cancer that gets fed. It gets fed by fear. There's epilepsy, head pains, migraines. Migraines are a terrible thing. I, I went to you as a young pastor that... that um, he was just up the road in Panta. And I went to go and see him. We were doing, administering, uh, I'd, I'd got into Nestle and we were getting a lot of food from them which we were distributing to the places that needed food. And so I went to go and see him at his office and the secretary of his was quite elderly and her husband had, re her husband had retired. And while I'm sitting waiting for the pastor to come, I see the secretary walk past and the husband's walking behind her with a battery powered fan. And he's putting water on the back of her head and he's fanning her. And I see this poor miserable man. I said, what's going on? She said, no, I've got this terrible migraines and just this air blowing on me um, will help. And I saw this poor guy's face and I saw her and I said, no, let me just pray for you. So this pastor arrived. He said, hang on, wait, we need the minstrels. I said, you need the what? He said, no, in the Bible, they used to get all the musicians. And when the musicians played, the Holy Spirit came and then people were healed. I said, we don't need minstrels. We just pray. So I called her in. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you, you blind devil, loose her mind. And she, she screamed. And she said there was like a band that was around her head all the time. And it broke. Wow. And she, she, could, she, could, she was free. And... The poor husband, he had for a year been walking behind her because he had retired. When she went to the toilet, he fanned her head. When she went to the bath, he fanned her head. This poor guy, he found me around the corner. He said, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. The poor guy was nearly dying. So migraines, depression, disappointment, self-pity. You know, people that always uh, Look at me, see, everything goes wrong for me. Look at that, see? Everybody else. Oh, look at me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Disappointment. Oh, look at this world. Oh, so disappointed. Your child gets a B instead of A, disappointed. You can become so disappointed, you become disappointed with yourself. There's some people that are disappointed with themselves. They haven't made it somewhere. They thought they were going to make it, they were going to be the CEO of a company, but they're disappointed that they're only a manager now. They, they live in that disappointment. And the devil takes advantage of that. And he brings that, that, that spirit of disappointment on you, so you become disappointed about everything. You go, you go look at the sea. Oh, disappointed, not enough bigger waves. <laughs> you, go and, you, want, you want to go and windsurf. Oh, not enough wind. Meanwhile, everybody, shoo, 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 shoo. Rejection, hatred, claustrophobia. Some people, are, are, you get in a lift with them, and they go, <gasps> I thought this one woman was going to give birth. She got in the lift with me, and, she, and she, she, she looked pregnant, but she wasn't. Thank goodness I didn't say it, you know. But she was, she was, she was looking up at the, at the numbers, and we were going to the 31 floor. She went, <gasps> And I thought, what's going on? She said, I can't stand small spaces. 
I can't stand small spaces. And the thing opened. There were all people in front of us. She just smashed through all the people to get out of the lift as soon as the door opened. It's terrible to be like that. There's rebellion. You're rebelling like you listen to the word. And the Bible say, and, and, and the word says, you need to submit to the Lord. And you say, I'm not going to submit to anyone. You need to submit to your, to, to, to your husband. I'm not submitting. That's a good quiet in church today. <laughs> it says, submit to your own husband, not someone else's husband. We had a guy in our church, my dad's church, he was asking all the women to submit to him. He said, you submit to me. She said, no, I'll submit to my husband. So my mother had to talk to him, and he left the church. I don't know what she said, but... But the Bible does say, submit to your own be subject to one another. Submit to one another. And look at your wife as a weaker. All of those things. Sometimes you just got that rebellion and say, I'm not going to do that. You know, a lot of times where rebellion comes from is when you've had to stand on your own two feet. When you've had to fight for yourself. When you've come from a place where you've had to stand and fight. And you get that attitude, I'm going to go forward. I'm not, no one's going to push me back. I'm not stepping back. I've stepped back enough. I'm going forward. But what happens with that is there's a danger that rebellion can come into your heart. And you say, I'm not going to listen to you. I don't need to listen to you. I don't need to listen to you. And so especially when you're spiritual authority, you say, why should I listen to you? I don't believe that a, a woman can be, lead a church. Why should I listen to Pastor Wendy? I'm not going to listen to her. Rebellion. And the Bible says rebellion is as witchcraft. And if witchcraft comes, that's when the devil comes into your life. And your children start getting attacked. The devil doesn't attack you. Sometimes he'll attack your children because of your rebellion. And so I'm sharing these things with you because we've got areas in our lives, in our soul area, where our emotions are, where our mind, our will. The devil wants to bend your will to his way, and God wants your will, you to freely give your will to him. And say, Lord, I want to willingly follow you. The devil wants you to resist that. He wants you to follow his, his, his way. Because the devil has a will and he tries to impose that will on you. And then he wants you to make the wrong choices. That's why our choices must always be in line with the word of God. And one of the greatest weapons that we have and that I always use is that the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you. In 1 John it said the Holy Spirit dwells. And the, um, the, the, spirit, the spirit of God is an umpire. It calls it an umpire. And that umpire inside here, you'll have peace. When you're about to make a decision... I will go like in my car and I'll say to Sylvia, there's two ways to go to work. And I'll say, okay, we're going to the right way to the left way. And I'll say, Holy Spirit, just tell, show me right now which way to go. The left or the right. And on the inside, when I think about the left, I'll have peace. When I think about the right, I'll have like, it's like rubbing the cat the wrong way. <laughs> you know, you just get that roughness. Then you go to the left and you see, next thing you read, you, you, Sylvia's on her phone, she says, there was just a big accident, truck went down. One day we didn't listen, I didn't listen. I prayed and I, the, this peace of God, I said right or left. And so I said, I'm just going to go against what the Lord says to see if he's right. And I went to the right way and we came down the hill, uh, Fields Hill. As we came down on the other side of the road, a petrol tanker exploded. And as we came down towards where the petrol tanker was, the column of smoke had caught fire. The column of smoke was right over the road where we were, right over the road. There was no way I could stop. There were trucks behind me. There, were, there was no way I could stop. And all I said was, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not listening to you. Save me. Abigail was looking at, at the fire. The fire was right, right across the road, a column of fire right across the freeway. Like we would have been burnt. And I'm not lying to you. Before the Lord, the column stood up like that. Like the wind took it up and it stood up like that. And as we passed through it, it lay down again. The devil's out to destroy you. But we have a supernatural power on the inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit on the side of us that can lead us and guide us. If you've got anything in your life that's compulsive, you can't get rid of it. There's an addiction. There's depression. There's all of those things that I mentioned here tonight, today. Today we're going to break it in Jesus' name.